Is the doctrine of the Trinity found in the Old Testament? The doctrine or teaching of the Trinity states that though there is only one true God, he is three persons. This basically means that God is one what and three whose, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are not said to be three different gods, but rather they are the three persons of the one being we call God or Yahweh. This doctrine is found throughout the New Testament writings. In Colossians, for instance, Jesus, the Son of God, is said to be the Creator God, and we're told that in Him all the fullness of the Godhead dwells. And Jesus Himself said that He and the Father are one. So the Son of God is not the Father, but He is God, and so is the Father. They are individual persons, but one God. However, while this orthodox teaching of the Christian Church seems to be very apparent throughout the New Testament scriptures, some have argued that this doctrine directly contradicts what we learn about God in the Old Testament, so therefore it must be wrong. In the Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter 43, God says, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Then in Isaiah 44, we're told, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Then in Isaiah 45, we find this statement, Thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, I am the Lord, and there is none else. And Isaiah also writes God's words in chapter 46, saying, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So what gives? Are we wrong about the Trinity? If not, how do we reconcile it with the teachings of the Old Testament about God being distinctly singular? Well, keep in mind that the doctrine of the Trinity does not claim that there are multiple gods. The Trinity is a monotheistic teaching. That is to say that Trinitarians believe that there is only one God, but that God is three persons. So these verses in Isaiah that teach monotheism, that there is only one God, do not prove the Trinity wrong. In fact, the Old Testament actually confirms the Trinity. I admit that the doctrine of the Trinity is found more clearly laid out in the New Testament, but did you know that it's actually very present in the Old Testament as well? I mean, if you look at even these very verses in Isaiah that teach of God's oneness, you'll also find a plurality to God as well. When Isaiah 44 talks about God's oneness, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord, Yahweh, of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Here we have the Lord, translated from the name Yahweh, who is the King of Israel, and we have the Lord, Yahweh, his Redeemer. So Yahweh here is both the King of Israel and his own Redeemer. This verse speaks of one Yahweh, but speaks of at least two different persons in Yahweh, because the word his shows a possession relationship between one and the other, Yahweh and his Redeemer, Yahweh. And it doesn't stop there. The Old Testament is actually filled with this type of plural language about God. In Genesis 1, when God creates man, he says, let us create man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. Here God is both plural and singular. He says, let us, plural, create man in our singular image. And then the Bible says that he created man in his own singular image. 
one image, plural persons, that speak to one another. The persons of God here have only one being. And we find this same curious terminology used in Genesis 19. After God appears to Abraham in the plains of Mamre, Abraham pleads with Yahweh not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and Yahweh agrees, provided that there are at least 10 righteous people left in the city. In chapter 19, we find that there aren't even 10 righteous men left. So, after angels are sent to remove Lot and his wife and two daughters from the city, the Bible says that the Lord, Yahweh, who was on the earth and had just finished speaking with Abraham, rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord, Yahweh, out of heaven. Here we have, again, two persons of God, Yahweh, raining fire from Yahweh. He is plural persons, but one singular Yahweh. And then consider the wording in Psalm 110 verse 1, a verse which Jesus claimed referred to himself. Here we read, The Lord, Yahweh, said unto me, that he understood God. He explains how he did not know God by asking this question, what is God's son's name? You see, in Exodus 33:20, we're told that no man can see the face of God and live. Yet Agur must have noticed that Abraham in Genesis 19 actually talked with a human-looking visitor who the text says was Yahweh and who rained fire from Yahweh out of heaven. So who is this God-man, this Son of God? What is his name? The patriarch Jacob asked the same question when he wrestled with a man at Bethel in Genesis 32. After the struggle, he was told that he'd wrestled with God and with men, and Jacob later claims I have seen God face to face. Here again is that God-man, that Son of God who is both Yahweh and man showing up in scriptures. And what's more is that when Jacob asked him of his name, the God-man replied, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And refused to tell him. And then there's another similar story in the book of Judges, chapter 13, when Samson's birth is foretold to his parents. Scripture tells us that the angel or messenger of the Lord came to Samson's mother to give her instructions on how to raise the boy once he was born. Then Manoah, Samson's father, prayed and asked that the man of God be sent back to explain these instructions more clearly to him. Then, when the messenger came back and spoke with Manoah, one of the things Manoah asked him was, What is thy name? To which the messenger replied, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is a secret? Then 
As Manoah offered a meat offering to the Lord, the messenger did something wondrous and ascended in the flame of the altar. That's when Manoah said, We shall surely die because we have seen God. So maybe that's why Agur wrote about the name of God's son. Because there are at least several times in Old Testament scripture where Yahweh is described appearing in human form. And when he is asked what his name is, he refuses to answer. Of course, we know his name. It's Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus. The pronunciation makes no difference, but he is the second person of the Trinity, and he is very present in the Old Testament. In fact, since we know that no man can see God the Father's glory and live, we can safely say that every time that God is seen by a man in Scripture, they are viewing Jesus. As is stated in John 1.18, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And it's said in Hebrews 1 that Jesus Christ is the express image of God, meaning that if some mortal man is to see God and live, he must have seen the expression of God in human form in the person of the Son of God. An example of this can be found in Isaiah chapter 6. Here, Isaiah sees Yahweh sitting on his throne, high and lifted up, and Yahweh says to him, Go and tell this people, the Jewish nation, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Now what's interesting about this encounter, beyond the obvious fact that Isaiah actually saw God in heaven on his throne, is what the Apostle John had to say about this passage in his Gospel in chapter 12. He writes that many of the Jews of Jesus' day didn't believe on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted, and I should heal them. This is a quote from Isaiah 6, when Isaiah saw Yahweh on his throne. But John writes, These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. That is Jesus. So John wrote that when Isaiah saw Yahweh, he saw Jesus, the Son of God. So, we know that there is a plurality of persons in God in the Old Testament, even though he is one God. And we've seen how the Son of God is seen as God in human form throughout, in contrast to the Father. But what about the other person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit? Can he be found as a person in the Old Testament? Some would say that the Holy Spirit is not a person in the Old Testament, that he is simply a powerful yet impersonal force like electricity. And it's true, in passages like Judges 3.10, 6.34, 11.29, and others, the Holy Spirit comes on men to empower them. This doesn't prove that the Spirit of God is a person, but it also doesn't prove that he is not a person either. But he has to be a person of God, because in Judges 13.25, he does more than just empower. He actually gives direction. Does an impersonal force like electricity give direction? And in 2 Samuel 23, as well as 1 Kings 22, we see the Holy Spirit speaking. Not only that, but in 2 Kings 2 and Ezekiel 8, the Holy Spirit actually lifts people up and carries them to another location. Then in Isaiah 40, 
we read that the Holy Spirit is omniscient or all-knowing. He cannot be taught new things because he already knows everything. Can an impersonal force like electricity empower and carry people? I suppose so. But could an impersonal force give direction, speak, and have knowledge? No. This proves without any doubt that the Holy Spirit of God is a person of the one true God, and that the Trinity is absolutely found in the Old Testament. What do you think? The doctrine of the Trinity is not only the clear teaching of the New Testament, it also fits perfectly with what we learn about God in the Old Testament. So perfectly, in fact, that it could not possibly be the invention of the mind of man. I think that the consistency of the doctrine of the Trinity throughout Scripture is just one more proof that the Bible is truly the Word of God and not made up by men. If you think I missed another good example of the Trinity in the Old Testament, let me know about it. And even if you disagree with me here, let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. And follow The Bible Explained on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash The Bible Explained. I really appreciate the support. Also, I want to remind you that the entire Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible tells us that all men are sinners and that we must pay for our sin against God for eternity in hell. That's definitely the bad news. But you see, the Bible is all about this one thing, the good news that Christ died to pay the penalty for our sin on the cross. Since your sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to turn from your sin and accept his salvation by faith. If you've never accepted this gift of God by faith, won't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a private message on Facebook and I'll be happy to talk to you more about having your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ.